Hi, it's Dr. David Green, founder and CEO of R3 Stem Cell International. Today we're discussing stem cell therapy for heart failure. So what are the reasons for a heart to fail over time? Well, it could be congestive heart failure, cardiomyopathy, a heart attack, maybe heart valve disease, chronic severe anemia, possibly misuse of drugs or alcohol over time, consequence of high blood pressure, emphysema, diabetes, an overactive thyroid, or maybe a complication of HIV or AIDS. So here's some statistics. Um, heart disease is the number one cause of death, not just in the U.S., but globally. So in the U.S., there's over 30 million adults diagnosed with heart disease, which is over 12% of the population. The number of deaths in the U.S. every year from heart disease is close to 650,000, and globally, it's close to 18 million deaths per year. On the right, you see some risk factors such as men more than women, smokers, people who are either overweight or obese category, uh, people with a family history of heart disease or heart attack, and people over the age of 55. So there's four stages of heart failure. Stage A is pre-heart failure, where there's really no symptoms. The person still has ejection fraction over 40%. Stage B is ejection fraction of 40% or less, and the person starts to have left ventricle dysfunction. Stage C is really when you start to get symptomatic and the ejection fraction continues to decline. The person may have shortness of breath, fatigue, weak legs, um, and possibly diffuse swelling. Now stage D are the, is the final stage, and that's really when a person is starting to get um, resistant to traditional medications. You may need an implantable device, like a cardiac defibrillator inside or a, um, some kind of a heart uh, assistance device, uh, and then maybe even a transplant. So let's look at the treatment options that are traditional for heart failure. Lifestyle changes such as exercise, quitting smoking or drinking, Dietary changes, uh, high blood pressure, blood pressure and cholesterol medications. Other medications may include ACE inhibitors, ARBs, beta blockers, diuretics. Possibly something implanted like a pacemaker, a cardiac defibrillator, ventricular assist device. Then a person may be helped with heart surgery or IV drugs like an inotropic. And then uh, end stage is uh, potentially a heart transplant. So let's breeze through what a heart transplant can entail. Um, typically before a patient can get on a waiting list, they have to show some proof of funding. It may be $10,000, it may be $100,000 know, in the bank, but if you look at the bill charges from a hospital for heart transplants, over $1.3 million. And then after a person gets discharged, they're gonna be on immunosuppressive drugs for life, which may be $2,500 to $3,000 per month, every month. Most transplant recipients are under the age of 65. Over half do receive a heart within a year of being on the list. There's over 3,500 transplants done in the U.S. as of 2019. 88% um, live for a year. 75% uh, live for five years. There are some significant exclusions. And it's very rare for someone over the age of 70 to be offered to be on the transplant list. So let's shift into stem cell therapy for heart failure now that you have a little background. The current approaches, which I just showed you in the last few slides, they do improve symptoms and they can decelerate um, adverse cardiac remodeling, but they fail to address the underlying problem of an irreversible loss of cardiac tissue. Okay, they don't promote you know, regeneration. Stem cell therapies, on the other hand, have the potential to fundamentally alter the conventional treatment of cardiac disease by stimulating the regeneration of an injured myocardium. So how do the biologics work? Well, once you read about five, ten papers on stem cell therapy for cardiac disease, what you find out is, as best as we know, it's not like the stem cells get put in and they themselves turn into cardiac cells. Here's the methods that we uh, see is paracrine signaling is, is what cell-to-cell -cell communication is. So those cells recruit other cells from within your body. They um, enhance new blood flow formation, which is neovascularization, and they reduce the death of existing cardiac cells. So in addition, there's immunomodulation. It's un very, very unusual to get a rejection 
of a stem cell treatment, um, that, like the ones that we offer. They do pr promote cardiac remodeling, and there are some direct mechanisms as well. Now, let me show you a few papers. Um, here's one on adult stem cell therapy and heart failure over a 16-year period. These researchers, uh, this paper was published in JAMA, over 35 studies they looked at. They did not see any significant adverse events, and in many of these studies, excellent outcomes. But they did notice that there was a high stem cell count being used, okay? And evidence suggests that the benefit of adult, adult stem cell therapy is likely mediated by the release of cardioprotective factors that activate one's own, the patient's pathways, endogenous, to repair the heart muscle rather than uh, de novo cardiomyocyte or blood vessel formation. So basically it's what we discussed on the previous slide. A lot of it is cell-to-cell -cell communication, amping up your own repair mechanisms that just are being lazy. Here's another paper, 2017, Safety and Efficacy of the IV Infusion of Umbilical Cord Mesenchymal Stem Cells in Patients with Heart Failure. So this study was very well done. It was 30 patients. Um, it was written in, in Chile as well as at the University of Miami. So 30 patients randomized uh, who had chronic cardiomyopathy. And the authors noted that the uh, stem cell treatments were very safe. There was no immune response, no rejection. There was significant improvement over, I think it's 12, 18 months, in left ventricular function, functional status, and quality of life. So all the parameters they looked at were significantly improved. In this paper, intracoronary infusion of Wharton's jelly derived MSCs in acute myocardial infarction. So for those who were one to two weeks out, from a heart attack, they injected the Wharton's jelly umbilical cord stem cells into the heart blood flow. 116 patients, half of which got really saline, the other half got a large dose of uh, Wharton's jelly stem cells. And the authors noted that it was very safe, there was uh, no significant adverse events, no rejection, great results with the ejection fraction over 18 months. So the conclusion was that the intracoronary infusion is safe and effective in patients who've had a heart attack, providing cl clinically relevant therapy within a favorable time window. So another one, uh, this one looks at uh, exosomes. Mesenchymal stem cell-derived exosomes improved uh, cardiac function by promoting new blood flow. So exosomes are byproducts of stem cells. We use them extensively at our international clinics. You will get them if you come down for heart, heart failure treatment. Um, in this paper, recent evidence showed that the paracrine function, which is the cell-to-cell -cell communication, rather than direct differentiation of cells, predominantly contributes to the beneficial effects of stem cells, but how that happens is not fully elucidated. And they also went on to say that the exosomes improve new blood flow and exert a therapeutic effect. So basically what they're saying, once again, is that we know that these treatments work. We know that they have a beneficial effect. Uh, we think most of it is cell-to-cell -cell communication, but we don't know the exact mechanisms yet of how they do that cell-to-cell -cell communicating. So in conclusion, many small studies, early clinical trials, and our own experience in international Clinic shows that stem cell therapy for heart failure is not only safe, but typically very effective. Not just for a few weeks, but you know we've seen it for one, two years to date. It appears that high stem cell numbers are necessary. I'll explain more about that in a second. It's not necessary to inject into the heart uh, blood vessels. You can do it IV, just like we do. And the umbilical cord mesenchymal stem cells gives fantastic results um, just as or better than any autologous treatment. Keep in mind that if you were to go internationally and get autologous treatment, such as your own bone marrow or fat, it takes time to culture those cells because you do need high numbers. With ours, you don't have to wait for that. It's already been done and waiting for you. So I do want to mention that embryonic stem cell therapy or induced pluripotent stem cell therapy is not what we use. 
and it's not what you should receive because neither of those techniques are ready for prime time use. All right? Both of those has a very high incidence of rejection. They have an incidence of tumor formation. What you want is what we offer, which is stem cell therapy with either mesenchymal stem cells and hematopoietic stem cells, which come from the category of adult stem cells. Adult stem cells also include the umbilical tissue, placenta, amniotic. It might be a little confusing, but they still fall into the adult category. So let's talk about our international program. We have several clinics in Mexico right now, Tijuana, Mexicali, one coming up in Cancun. The one in Tijuana is only 20 minutes from the San Diego airport. Uh, I, know there because, I know that because I've done that trip plenty of times. It's very easy. It's in a nice section of Tijuana, the Rio Zona. You'll have an escort transportation. Um, the process starts with a simple free phone consultation with one of our licensed, experienced stem cell doctors. Uh, they will talk to you, answer your questions, listen to your concerns. They'll look at your medical records if uh, you're able to provide those. And our patient concierge rep dedicated to you will then assist with all of your travel logistics. So let's talk about the cells for a moment because a lot of magic happens at the lab. We took a long time uh, figuring out which lab to partner with. We partnered with GenCell. They're in Mexico City. They have a pristine safety record. Uh, they are CGMP compliant, the good manufacturing practice standards, uh, ISO, you know, worldwide. The quality assurance of the cells from GenCell is actually more stringent than the FDA. When you go for your treatment, you'll be able to see the certificate of assurance and Dr. De La Puerta, um, if he's the one treating you, will gladly explain it for you, looking at all the infectious disease testing, the cell viability, things like that. Umbilical cord stem cells in Mexico are allowed to be cultured, unlike the United States. That is the reason we can get those very, very high cell count numbers that you need for something like heart disease or kidney failure or COPD. Uh, we don't use preservative in Mexico because you don't have to. That way we have about a 95% stem cell viability. Very pure, potent cells that are below the fifth generation. That means they haven't been cultured and cultured and cultured and cultured like most international centers. So you may say, you know what, I got 100 million stem cells in Panama or wherever. Well, you know, a lot of those are probably non-functional because they've been cultured so much that they just don't even look like stem cells anymore. But we don't have that problem. So R3 has been featured on all different media channels, um, magazines. Uh, this year we won the uh, 10 most uh, innovative companies of the year, 50 uh, smartest companies of the year. It's been uh, really uh, pleasant to see. Um, but not as pleasant as the outcomes, uh, the patients who call or write in uh, to tell us just how well they're doing for whatever condition it is that they came down for or up for. Um, so start the process with us today, very simple, by calling 888-988-0515 and visit us online at stemcelltreatmentclinic.com.